Good morning and really thanks again uh, to the organizers for inviting me to this exciting event. My name is Vichislar. <clears throat> My talk will be about uh, playing troubled past in a, how we kind of designed the historical video game Soboda 1945 Liberation. Just a brief background, uh, I'm a scholar at Charles University. I'm in New Media Studies and Game Studies. But at the same time, actually, I'm a lead game designer at Charles Games, which is an independent Prague-based studio focusing on narrative video games, particularly with, uh, let's say, historical or serious topics. And Charles Games is actually a spin-off of Charles University. So we are an independent company, but it's a private-public partnership, and we've been founded or co-founded by Charles University. But yeah, we now kind of continue to work independently, but most of our stuff are somehow connected to Charles University. We, in particular, uh, developed two games. Uh, one is Attentat 1942, which is a game uh, kind of gained quite a critical acclaim. And it's a game about the uh, uh, Nazi occupation of Czechoslovakia and the assassination of Reinhard Heydrich, the um, the uh, rice protector of the occupied Czechoslovakia and the lead architect of the Holocaust. And then recently we published a sequel, which is called Soboda 1945 Liberation. And it's again a historical game dealing with the end of Second War and the Second War aftermath, particularly the expulsion of certain Germans and the rise of, uh, of communism to power in Czechoslovakia. Before I start with uh, describing the kind of uh, design process of our games and particularly the the uh, the challenges we faced when we are trying to uh, to translate uh, oftentimes emotionally charged and like an ethically charged uh, and contested history into the medium of video games, which has many many affordances, but at the same time many limitations. I would like to talk before I do that. I would like to talk a bit about um, some brief theoretical concepts, like where we are uh, dealing with historical games. I would like to, uh, in particular, start with the concept of popular history, which was coined by, I mean, that historical video games have been praised by Adam Chapman as one of the most widespread and successful forms of popular history. What does it mean? It means that uh, you typically have some kind of um, historical knowledge from school, and once you leave school, unless you're a professional historian, in most cases, your engagement with history comes through popular culture, be it novels, movies, or today, video games. And I would say that for previous generation, the key source for constructing some kind of imagination how different eras uh, and places looked like in the past have been books. Later on, this uh, role has been taken by movies, particularly by, by historical movies, which kind of, and again, are a very important tool in creating some collective imagination and understanding of the past. And for contemporary generation, more and more, this popular medium or medium of popular history are becoming video games. At the same time, uh, historical topics are very popular in video games. Like there are so many games which deal with history, uh, in particular Sec Second World War. That's I would say favorite favorite historical setting in video games. Nevertheless, most of these games, uh, they focus on a very specific, let's say, specific subset or specific specific part of history. And that's mainly they focus on the technology of war, on military campaigns and military operations. The, there is actually a term selective realism uh, coined by uh, colleague Helger Poch, which essentially claims that these games, in particular first person shooters, they kind of like by focusing only on on a war as a as a combat between art men, they selectively exclude negative and challenging aspects of war and violence and invite for pleasurable experiences of play that avoid difficult ethical decisions. So there are certain filters which there are things like there are historical things which typically are not included in video games, like the civil casualties, like the the role of civilians in conflict, uh, children and women, also for ethical reasons, you know, many games uh, deliberately exclude women and children from gameplay because they don't want to uh, uh, enable players to, uh, to to harm them, for example. But as a result, war is kind of, uh, in most cases, presented as a, as a, as a, as a as only combat. It's kind of also a clean combat. And the broader consequences uh, will happen, especially after the war, the, the devastation, etc., or even the, the what happened before the war, is mostly, mostly omitted. 
Uh, there are few exemptions. There are few, of course, there are more and more. There are games which try to de deal um, with the story differently, like uh, like the, like the, the Berlin Disorder of Mine or you know My Child Lebensborn or True Darkest of Time. So there are like now games which try to critically engage with uh, with with uh, with uh, history of war. But nevertheless, the the trend is still 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 that. We try to do something else. Is our games, and uh, I would again borrow a term critical games from Alexander Galloway, who years ago uh, argued that there should be games uh, like documentary games or critical games which should strive for better uh, representation of history or more critical and more, more, uh, more broad uh, depiction of history. He actually argued that critical games could be games with that critically that reflect critically on the nature of everyday life and repleted as it is with struggle, personal drama and injustice. So even though I wouldn't say our game is necessarily a critical game, but we definitely uh, borrow from Galloway certain 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 aspects of the framework and we try to uh, do a game that would be more uh, historically accurate and would like more directly deals with uh, with troubled past. When I'm saying troubled past, it's important to say that Soboda 1945 liberation it's actually focusing on set of events which uh, is still until today is contested and uh, there's heated debates in the Czech public sphere and some of them yeah, uh, are, are tied to I would say historical traumas or national trauma so what the game deals with like it's the game is happening in one small village in the Czech German borderland and it deals with uh, the end of second war the liberation from Nazism and it's actually the time when the region uh, witnessed the uh, Probably the most brutal fighting and horse of war. They were like that marches going through the area, uh, the German army trying to flee from the Soviets. So, so they like most of the heavy fighting that actually happened uh, at the end of the war. Then it deals with uh, what happened immediately after the war, which is the particularly the, the the retribution, the retribution against uh, collaborators and 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 and, and uh, war criminals, and also the expulsion of so-called Sudeten Germans. There have been three and a half million. Uh, German speaking Czechoslovak citizens in Czechoslovakia and they've been forcibly expelled after the war in many times resulting in 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 deaths and and, and casualties and this game is dealing with that because that was the region where the expulsion happened which again is a topic still uh, which is still quite contested in the uh, public discourse and then we are dealing with uh, uh, let's say the first years uh, after the second war particularly with the elections in 1946, uh, which uh, the Communist Party uh, uh, won actually in the Czech Republic, in, in Bohemia, and later on in 1948 uh, staged a, a coup d'état and essentially, you know, uh, took power and established an uh, authoritarian regime. So we are also dealing with uh, the rise of communism to power and with a cease of power, and particularly we are dealing with uh, in, in game with so-called collectivization, uh, which is, uh, I, I'm sure you know, uh, or, or those among us who are from Poland know, it's like a forced, it's a, it's a, it's a forced land grab where the communist um, forced uh, landowners, particularly the big landowners, to voluntarily join uh, the collective farms. And um, they've been pressured uh, hard to do that, oftentimes prosecuted and, on, and um, sometimes even executed. So we are, and this, this collectivization, particularly hit the countryside and, and, and the villages in the borderland. And in our game, we are dealing with that. So these are all quite uh, serious or heavy topics. And there are many caveats when you want to make a video game uh, about that. And, and, and there was kind of no, no like uh, guidelines how to exactly deal with that. So we, many things we tried and we, um, we uh, were experimenting and uh, yeah, trying to overcome the challenges. We had some experience with Attentat because Attentat was, was also similarly, I would say, charge game because it was dealing with occupa Nazi occupation, uh, prosecution of Jewish population, Holocaust. So it was similarly ethically, ethically charged game. So we used some knowledge we had from, from Attentat. Uh, at the same time, there were some new, new issues. The important thing is that at Charles Games, we developed the game with uh, a team of historians from the Institute of, of uh, Contemporary History of the Czech Academy of Sciences. So that's picture. It's like actually a mixed team. So you can you can guess who is historian and who is game designer and who is programmer. And um, 
So we had them on board since the very beginning. Now, briefly, what we did. Uh, I would actually now ask Augustin, if I may, if you can play a very short trailer for the game so we kind of know how the game looks like and yeah, what's, what's, what it's about. Vám před očima zabijou kamaráda, tak na to nikdy nezapomenete. Pamatuju si, že teta si směla zabalit jen to nejnutější. Kufry nesměly vážit víc než 50 kg a balila je pod dohlem českých vojáků. Vykašlete se na ten průzkum, že třete si práci. Ta škola dělá ve vesnici zlou krev. Lidi nezajímá to, co bylo před 50 rokama. Lidi zajímá to, co bude zejtra. Okay, uh, thanks for playing the, the clip. Uh, so what is the kind of narrative of the game? Uh, the narrative is, uh, uh, is that you actually play the game in 2001. So you don't play in history, you play in 2001, and you play as a historian uh, tied to the National Heritage Institute, and you are actually sent to a small village called Soboda, uh, which is, in, in the, in the, as I said, in the border region. And your task is to investigate local school uh, to decide if uh, the school should, can be demolished, because some people in the village want the school to be demolished to expand uh, uh, their businesses, and other people want to uh, beat, uh, labeled, or proclaimed national monument because the school is from uh, the beginning of the 19th century. So it's kind of like the school is like really a site of memory, which is tied to almost everything which happened in the village, kind of was somehow tied to the school. And so you kind of arrive to the village to investigate what seems very banal and mundane case. But at the same time, you soon discover that there are really grievances and feuds in the village, which goes for a long time. Some of them are tied to the collectivization of land and like the after forced collectivization. And some of them, some of the people are communists, some of them are not, some of them are prosecuted. Something is tied to the expulsion of Germans, some is some is tied to even the pre-war period. And the school, as I said, has a central role in that. And also uh, very soon you, once you do the uh, kind of investigation of the school, you, you, you have to investigate and assess where the school has or not some historical value, you find an old cache with old photographs. And among them, you discover a photograph of your dad, who apparently have been in the village uh, immediately after the war or at the end of the war. And you start to want to know what your grandpa did there and what was his role and how is he tied to different people in the village because uh, he never told you. And so it's kind of starts as like first official trip, but then it turns in that you actually have your own kind of agenda uh, in the village. So we decide to stay a few days in the village and investigate it. That's yeah, that's uh, that's the the kind of main uh, main uh, main map where you can talk to different characters. The game mechanics are uh, actually dual. First, the most important is that you mostly talk to people. So most of the game is that you it's like it's like uh, we have like recorded full video like interactive uh, interactive uh, videos where you visit different people and you ask them questions about the past. And it's like so it's kind of like detective story. And depending on whom you ask and how you frame the question, you get a different answer. So 
every single uh, interview can be radically different depending whom you ask and how you how you how you progress. And uh, depending what you what you learn from one one person, you can you know unlock different options at another person. So you kind of constantly uh, reassess what you, what someone told you. And some sometimes in uh, f like few specific parts of the game, you can replay the memories of the people. So for example, this is a game where um, one lady is uh, talking about about the communist times, how they were struggling to keep their farm. So you can try actually to replay her memory, and you are a farmer, like you are playing her father. And you are trying to uh, keep a prosperous farm uh, after the communist coup, and you are progressively being uh, by the system being forced to abandon the farm and, and to enter the, the collective, the collective, uh, the collective farm. The key, uh, the the yeah, the important thing is that in the game you can't really change the past. The past is kind of fixed as it is as, as it happened. You, so you can, as I said, depending whom you ask and how you frame it, you get to different evaluation of the past. And sometimes the people tell you radically different and contradicting uh, stories, and it's up to you to make kind of sense out of it. But you can't really change the outcome of the past. So even if you play the memories, you can play differently, but then they will say, but yeah, what really happened is that we did this and this, and uh, so you can't change and rewrite the story. There's no, there is no kind of um, space for alternative history. The key challenge we are dealing with is the is the issue of authenticity. How you can be historically accurate and how you can recreate, you know, authentic, authentic history. If you are in a medium of video games, which uh, which is constructed, which is you know, which is which is which is um, which is construed. So uh, we uh, used similar approach as in Atentat. We uh, or our historians collected uh, like hundreds of real testimonies from that from that region, uh, from a time period. But we decided we won't use them in a literal fashion. So we won't, you know, use real people's names and real people's um, real people's uh, stories as a as a as a prop in our game. We constructed the the village we created. The village Soboda is fictitious. The, in the region, there is no village called Soboda. So all the stuff which is happening is well documented and happened there. But the village is fictitious, and the people living in the village are so fictitious. So uh, we created fictitious characters. But typically, each of these characters is based on two or three different testimonies. So our historians typically, com you know, mm, uh, combined different real testimonies and create a fictitious character. And we kind of want to show that this character is fictitious uh, to, to the player. So what we also do is that when these people uh, are talking about some like well documented uh, events, which happened in the region, for example, we use archival documents uh, or archival footage we got from the National Affairs Archive. But at the same time, when they are talking about uh, their, for example, private past, which is constructed, we use uh, black and white comics, graphic novel elements. So it's kind of we want to differentiate what is our construct and what is uh, what is what is what is what is real. So our characters can be labeled as uh, I would say it's like a fictitious assemblage of authentic testimony. So everything is based on research, real testimonies, but it's fictitious. The reason is uh, first, of course, ethical, because uh, if you can't like you know. Uh, recreate a story or change if, if it's like a real person you can't change a single thing on it and we uh, needed to you know make the stories interconnected and and make some make, make some uh, different uh, different quest different answers for different questions and also for like yeah kind of like um, pedag pedagogical or like uh, uh, didactic reason because we sometimes we needed different stories to be there present and uh, so, so like there are there are different like layers of history we wanted to cover in one particular character because we don't have uh, didn't have that much slots. Then second very key feature of the game is the is the is the the the, the question of polyphony or the question of multi perspectivity. And we deliberately tried to show you history from very intimate, very person perspective, but from eight different perspectives. So in the game, actually, you can meet eight different characters. There are six of them, and uh, each of them is like having s somehow is tied to the village. But each of them comes from very different like background or or political views or even ethnicity. So we have, for example, uh, we have people of Jewish origin uh, who who who've, who've been in the village and 
uh, our Holocaust survivor. We have uh, people who are, who are Germans and who've been expelled after the war. We have also people, for example, who serve in, in the army and been actively, actively, uh, and they've been fighting, uh, fighting the Nazis, and they've been actually active in the expulsions. We have people who've been, um, as I said, farmers uh, who uh, were, um, who were, who also were uh, suffering during 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 the beginning of communism or were prosecuted and sent to labor camps. But we have also people who've been active communists or or, for example, yeah, their, their parents been been uh, uh, communist uh, fun officers or, fu or or functionalists, and they've been actually responsible for the for the um, for the uh, collectivization at the time. And all these people are offering you not necessarily different facts, but definitely different evaluation of the past. They have different views, and they they, they see what happened differently, and their worldviews and their uh, narratives are not, uh, can be sometimes contradictory. And the game deliberately uh, leaves to you as a player to critically assess them and to also critically assess the, all the, you know, the documents. You can go through documents and you can go through the village chronicles, etc., and and, uh, and newspapers, etc., from time. And you have to kind of critically assess what all these um, things are, uh, are actually telling you and how, how to make sense of it. Uh, because of that, we actually heavily relied on the concept of pedagogical constructivism by Piaget, essentially uh, telling you that uh, history is not uh, something definite uh, and you know set. Like typically in, in in Czech Republic, when you study history in schools, it's mostly a list of uh, important events and dates, uh, and you kind of like memorize that list and that's it. We wanted to show you that there are concrete like people stories behind that behind the list and what is mo most important like history is not doesn't give you definite answers but it's more likely uh, or it's most pr most um, precisely a, like like a, like a platform for questions to be asked so we kind of that's like kind of uh, that's like kind of the ultimate aim of the game is to really kind of um, help the players to think about uh, the past and how it's uh, how it's um, how it's perceived differently and and uh, and how it's how it's narrated Important thing is also that most of these people actually um, uh, live through this whole second half of 20th century. That's why our game is happening in 2001, because it is, because in 2001 it was still possible to talk to people who lived through the war or who lived through the 50s. Uh, uh, now, uh, unfortunately, they are mostly not among us or they are, they are leaving us. So that's why we set the game in 2001. Uh, and also we wanted to show that, yeah, these people like lived through Second War, Communism, even the Velvet Revolution, because oftentimes when you think about history in schools, it's being taught as kind of isolated islands. You know, there is Second World War, then there is the Communist Putsch, then there is 1968, and there is the Velvet Revolution, and they're like isolated islands of events, which uh, actually there have been people living through the whole, whole, whole 50 years, uh, and it's interconnected. And it's part of their personal narrative. Uh, the key role. Of our team was the role of historians, uh, and in the beginning, we thought that uh, the historians will kind of uh, give us some. They will do the research. They will give us some materials, and we'll construct the game based out of that with with professional scriptwriters, game designers, etc. When we try to do that, uh, uh, the historians always vetoed what we what we what we presented to them, saying it's not accurate. It's not. It's 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 not. It's not uh, authentic or it's it's like it's like uh, not the, the the full picture. We tried and tried, uh, and then finally we realized we are not able to do that. Like we are n because we lack the knowledge uh, of the of the of the details and language and everything. So we actually uh, reverse the roles and we ask the historians. You actually should be the ones who will start and you will write the dialogues. You will write the 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 uh, the, 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 the the questions and everything, and then we will just learn, adjust it to be a better game. So we actually progressively turned historians into game designers and i think that's that's one thing which so it should yeah they even they even like kind of learn the formal language uh, this, this is like um kind of the the scheme of the, of the of the dialogues in the game and most of that was written by historians and we just then adjusted it to be more playable and of course they had like final final word like so every single thing Every single utterance or object which is in the game has been either written or approved by professional historians. And I would say the stories are much better because they are much more realistic now. 
than when then when we try to do it uh, ourselves because of course our kind of uh, perception of his story is um heavily formed by you know another popular imagination which might not be actually accurate. So the stories we are presenting are, are quite down to earth, are quite like realistic. And as I said, they stem directly, even in the terms of language and word and wording uh, from uh, the real testimonies we have. Another important role of, uh, of historians is that of contextualization. Uh, we are in the game, we are talking with topics which are not necessarily well known to young generation uh, of players in the Czech Republic nor uh, and of course not, uh, not globally and the game is actually available in, in the game both games are available in english german and czech so we are kind of like uh, yeah uh, aiming at global audience so what we also did is uh, uh, we provide the players with uh, extensive encyclopedia so every time there is a term or, or a date or a topic um, which appears in the game a uh, small like window will pop up and you will have the ability to click and to read encyclopedia entry and the encyclopedia entry is not uh, it's not game like it's like it's like really um, real factual encyclopedia which provides you with this context uh, what is happening in the game and what these people are talking about and we have like more than 200 entries uh, for the game so it's kind of, kind of extensive I would say extensive research and extensive work which is which is uh, used there as for technology uh, the game is built in unity and we actually uh, constructed our own it's called Charles FMV engine, and it's like a tool which allows us to to relatively relatively easily uh, uh, design and develop uh, our own um, full motion video adventure games. So it's actually is there. Uh, it's in in the Unity Asset Store. It's actually available to other institutions or or teams or individuals who would be interested in in creating similar games. Finally, uh, what is the reception? Uh, Attentat has, as I said, Attentat has like really, uh, really like um, highly positive international reception. Uh, it, it will be nominated to IGF. It was actually nominated to Apple Design Award and won several awards. Uh, so we are kind of like uh, in the beginning afraid if Svoboda Liberation, uh, if the topic of the game is uh, comparable to Attentat because Attentat is dealing with world kind of recognized events, you know, Nazi occupation and uh, assassination of Heydrich. And so what I was dealing with is kind of like more local and more obscure things. Nevertheless, it appeared that the game was generally positively, positively received. We, uh, it got really interesting, like, like mostly positive reviews. It actually won some uh, major award in, in Brazil and big festival. So it seems that even though when we talk to people, they say like kind of even though they didn't know about it in the beginning, like and the, the, the topics we are dealing in the game are fairly unknown to them. That's kind of, yeah, it's like some small country in, in Central or Central Eastern Europe. But this, the story seemed to be seemed to be universal. Like it's the, the, the story of, you know, where's the line between justice and revenge? What's kind of your personal responsibility uh, in these times? What was what, like, the, you know, exploring your own family history and kind of coming to terms with it, et cetera, et cetera. So these topics seems to be understandable. Uh, finally, as every game has a bonus level, uh, there is also a bonus level today. We are actually just two days ago, we announced a new game we are working on and it's called Train to Sachsenhausen. It's actually a game we are uh, working on in close collaboration with Living Memory, a Living Memory or, uh, NGO, which is NGO taking care of the victims of um, Nazi regime, uh, both pers like personally and also like uh, focusing on preserving their memories. And it's being financed by Ifezau Stiftung, and it's a game about the student protest of 1939, where the Czech university students protested, protested the uh, Nazi regime. They, they held huge demonstrations, and finally several of them were, were executed, and uh, more than thousands sent to the Sachsenhausen concentration camp. So we have like memories of people who went through that, uh, both resistance and and the uh, prosecution. And the game again should be available on mobile in spring. So I would like to thank you for your attention uh, and I just would like to kind of as a final or closing words, uh, I think that uh, I really believe video games are a great medium for telling important and and um, important and um, strong stories. And it can be even the stories which are kind of uh, uh, very personal, but very intimate and very personal. And 
if you look at our particle contemporary story, there are so many stories which deserve to be told. And I would say games can be the medium through which you can actually tell these stories. So thank you for the attention and I'm looking forward to your questions. <laughs>